Welcome, listeners. This is Storytime with PJ's Games. For this narration video, I will be reading my children's story, Adventures of Steve and Bucky. So let me tell you how it all began with a boy named Steve. I call this one, The Adventures of Steve and Bucky. This is our beginning. In the small town of Rutland, there was an 11-year-old boy named Stephen Andrew. But everyone around here called him Steve for short. In school, Steve wasn't that popular, so he didn't have that many friends. But he had a next-door neighbor named Fletcher Finn. He lived next door to Fletcher since they were little. They even went to the same school together. So they were really good friends. Steve also had an older sister, Jennifer Andrew. They called her Jen for short. Steve and Jen didn't have a father. They only had a mother growing up. Now Steve is sitting at the park on the swing set. As he sits, he sees other kids playing and one guy walking his dog. Not hanging out, not hanging around that many friends really made Steve want a dog. A dog that would always be there for him. A household pet. A dog to play fetch with. Fast forward tomorrow afternoon, and Steve was still at school. As he was Getting books out of his locker, a bigger kid approached him. The big kid lifted Steve up by his shirt. It looks like he was mad at Steve because he was supposed to do his homework for him yesterday. But of course Steve didn't want to because that would be wrong. And so the bullies said to him, You're so gonna get it. Steve knew this kind of thing wouldn't happen if he had a dog to protect him. Now came February, and Valentine's Day was just coming up. But like always, Steve was bummed out about it because he never gets a Valentine. Steve thought maybe he'll hang out with Fletcher and Jen on a Valentine's Day, but unfortunately, Fletcher had a thing with his parents on that day and his sister Jen had other plans than hanging out with her little brother. So it was Valentine's Day now, and Steve was riding his bike home after having a lousy day at school. It was late afternoon. When Steve walked in the door, his mother yelled from her room, Stephen, you home? Come here for a sec. Steve took off his jacket and stepped into his mother's room. Before he could say anything, he noticed the doggy crate next to her. So she said, I know how you always wanted a dog, so I went out and got you one while you were at school. With that, she opened the crate door. The dog slowly began to walk out. He was a small dog. He was pink and white all over. Steve thought he was the cutest thing. That's when Steve picked him up and took a look at him. What are you going to name him? said Steve's mother. So with a smile on his face, he said, I think I'll call him Bucky. And that would be his name. So for the rest of Valentine's Day, Steve, Steve had left. Uh, for the rest of Valentine's Day, Steve had left. He spent it with Bucky. They played fetch in the yard, took him to the park, all sorts of fun stuff. For the first time in Steve's life, he felt like he had a best friend that would always be there. Even though Steve was really good friends with Fletcher, now he feels like he has 
a best friend who will never leave his side. So now Valentine's Day was over, and it was just heading into the night. Steve was in his room putting on his PJs. As he was doing so, Bucky was lying on Steve's bed. Steve was planning on getting him his own little doggy bed tomorrow. But for tonight, Bucky sleeps at the foot of his bed. Steve had a lot of fun with Bucky today. As Steve was getting cozy in bed, he said to Bucky, Good night, buddy. We'll play again tomorrow when I come home from school. The next day, Steve woke up early in the morning. The sun was shining through his blinds, but when he looked at the foot of his bed, Bucky was gone. He then looked all around his room, but since he was afraid of being late for school, he got dressed and went downstairs for breakfast. When he got there, Bucky was there eating his breakfast on the kitchen floor with his doggy dish. His mother and sister were also there. Looks like Bucky got hungry, so the mother fed him. Steve ate breakfast, grabbed his backpack, and said goodbye to Bucky. When Steve walked out the door, Bucky came up to the window watching Steve as he walks away. He had a sad puppy look on his face as he seen Steve getting in the school bus. In Bucky's doggy mind, he didn't think Steve was coming back. But as time went on, Bucky got used to him coming and going. Whenever Steve has, hasn't, whenever Steve hasn't playing with Bucky, he'll be in the attic with Jen. They would be building, building things up there, but in secret. They didn't want their mother knowing about it. Much later, Fletcher got a pet, too. Seeing Steve with Bucky made him wanted a pet, so his mother and father got him a monkey for his birthday. He named it Chim Chim. Very soon, Steve and Fletcher got Bucky and Chim Chim together. It seems Bucky and Chim Chim got along great. Later, Fletcher decided to help Steve and Jen in the attic. Soon, their attic became like a science lab. One day, Steve, Fletcher, and Jen were all at school. Meanwhile, Steve and Jen's mother was at work. They've left Bucky and Chim Chim in the Andrew house alone. But someone left the attic door wide open. So while checking everything out, Bucky and Chim Chim wandered up there. There was a lot of science stuff up there. As they looked around, Chim Chim noticed a capsule. Being the curious monkey that he is, he walked inside. While that was happening, Bucky was near some control panel. He flipped a random switch. After that, he joined Chim Chim in the capsule. Once that was done, something happened. While inside the capsule, something changed about them. They went from normal animals to talking animals. Bucky was now able to talk. Bucky was now able to walk on his hind legs, too. Once they got out, they felt different. That's when Chim Chim spoke for the first time. I feel odd. How you feeling, Bucky? He said. So Bucky replied, Okay, I guess. Even Bucky and Chim Chim found it odd that they can talk. After trying to figure out what happened, they heard a bus drive up. It was the kids' school bus. The kids were home. They climbed up the attic window. As they looked down, as they looked out, they had a, they had to hurry back downstairs, and so they ran.
Buck and Chim Chim were at the front door when the kids walked in. Their school day ended before their mom got home. The first thing Steve did when he walked through the door was look down at Bucky to say, Hi, Bucky. How were you? Of course, Steve didn't expect him to actually answer. But he did anyway. I'm fine. How are you? That's when Steve... Fletcher and Jen freaked out at this point. They couldn't believe Bucky just spoke to them. That's when Chim Chim spoke up too. Hi, everybody, he shouted. The three kids freaked out again. They had, a, had to ask themselves, how did this happen? How is this possible? But Bucky and Chim Chim couldn't answer that. After finding out their animals can talk, the three of them ran up to the attic lab to figure this out. They were checking to see if anything was out of the ordinary. When they got up there, it was. Steve noticed the capsule had been used. The three kids thought it was cool to have, ta have a talking dog and a talking monkey, though. But they must keep this a secret. They can't even tell their parents about it, or they'll be taken away to be tested on. As days went by, life was great having talking animals to play with. Steve, Fletcher, and Jen got more creative with the stuff they did in the lab. Steve even built a new capsule. Steve went to bed that night. But while everyone was asleep, something happened in the lab. A new life form had been summoned from another planet into their house. It was the new capsule. It brought not one, but two life forms. They were small. They had antlers and tiny tails. They took the form of a deer. They weren't that threatening. Actually kind of cute. When they got there, they have stepped out of the capsule. They started to roam around the house. The following day, Steve woke up to the sound of his mother calling him from downstairs. She was also calling for Jen. Their mother was waiting for them in the kitchen. When they got there, she did not look happy. So they looked around and saw the kitchen was a mess. Can you two tell me which one of you did this? Their mother asked with an angry look on her face. That morning, Steve and Jen had to clean the whole kitchen. Bucky helped a little. While they were cleaning, Bucky stopped to ask, Okay, we're alone. You kids can tell me. Which one of you did this? So Jen said while looking at Steve, Well, I know I didn't do it. Then Steve said right back, I didn't do it either. While they were arguing like brother and sister do, Bucky noticed something behind them. It was the two aliens from another planet. So he started barking very angrily. That's when Steve and Jen stopped fighting. They didn't know what was upsetting Bucky at first. But then they looked behind them. They looked like little deer. One had red antlers. The other had green antlers. Looks like the deer made the mess. So the three friends just looked at it, at them for a second, but the one with red antlers spoke first. Hello, earthlings. My name is Derry, she said. Then the other one spoke. Yes, I am John Dare. Call me John. But this isn't the strangest thing Stephen Jen had seen so far. The two deer went on to explain how they're from a planet called Deramia. Once all that 
Once all that was covered, Steve and Jen later called over Fletcher and Chimchim to the house. Everyone was up in the attic now. After introducing them to the deer, they had to figure out what to do with them. They couldn't tell their parents. Just like the secret of fucking Chimchim talking, they had to keep this a secret too. So the three kids decided to keep this a secret until they find out what to do with them. Meanwhile, they kept those two up in the attic lab, but as everyone re resumed their normal lives, <clears throat> Derry and John began to cause trouble in the house. Derry and John wandered out of the attic so much it was hard keeping them away from Steve and Jen's mother. The whole gang was trying to, as as quick as possible to find a way to transport them back to their home planet. And finally, it was done. Steve and Bucky had built a small rocket. <laughs> their... The whole gang was trying as quick as possible to find a way to transport them back to their home planet, and finally it was done. Stephen Bucky had built a small rocket that's just their size. With it, they'll be in Deremia in seconds. But Derry and John had one little problem with that. They didn't want to go back. When Steve and the others... <clears throat> when Steve and the others told them they had the rocket ready, Derry explained how they were actually kicked out of Deremia and that everyone didn't want them back. When asked what they did, John answered, Well, you see, we're the kind of deer who no one wants around. While trying to figure out what to do with them, Jen said to everyone, Well, they can't stay here. That's when Steve asked, What if they did? Jen thought that was crazy. How would we even keep this from Mom, she asked. But Steve thought it would be easy, since they're keeping the secret of their talking pets from her. Then it was settled. Derry and John were staying on Earth. But... Uh, but arrangements were made. Derry lived at the Andrew house, and John lived at the Finn house. Later that evening, Steve was in the dark living room watching TV while he sits next to Bucky on the couch. But all of a sudden, Bucky noticed something glowing from the window. It was green, and it was outside. Steve looked, too. Once they both noticed this, Derry walked through. She walked right past Steve and Bucky to head out the door. The same thing was happening next door at Fletcher's house. Both Derry and John were outside at night with that glowing green thing. It was in the ground in the middle of the street. Soon, Steve, Bucky, Jen, Fletcher, and Chim Chim approached the green thing along with Derry and John. All seven of them were there. While staring at it, Steve asked one of the deer, What is that? It was clear only Derry and John knew what was going on, so Derry explained, It's one of us, an alien deer. And that's when, and that's what came out of the green thing. A small alien deer like Derry and John came out of it and walked up to everyone. It turns out that Deer wanted to take Derry and John back, but his uh, intentions as to what he was going to do with them wasn't good. He wanted to lock them up. You see, that Deer didn't like the two of them, but the others weren't going to let that happen. And so 
The whole gang ran into Stephen Jen's house. That other deer was chasing them. They all ran up in the attic lab. They thought they could use something from up there to get rid of him. As he chased them up there, he slipped and landed in the rocket Stephen Bucky had built. The door of the rocket was left open, so he just fell right in there. Once in the rocket, Bucky quickly grabbed a remote that controls the rocket. With just a push of a button, the rocket took launch. That mean, mean deer was heading back to Deer Ramia. Deary and John were safe to live on Earth with their new friends. From now on, I mean, I'm, from then on, Steve Fletcher and Jim, Steve Fletcher and Jen lived with awe of their talking animals in secret. Their parents were to believe the two deer were only stuffed and stuffed toys. So Steve and the others spent some time in the lab building things to travel in. From, from then on, Steve and Bucky would go on many adventures together, but they but that day on Valentine's Day when Steve was first given Bucky was the best adventure of all. Because on that day Steve had met his best friend. The end. Thank you for listening. I will be posting stories like this daily, and if you liked my narration, subscribe to my channel.